What's up everybody, welcome to the Game of the Week show, episode number 9. I am your host Matt Southwell and on my right is the ever-present Dan Gilbert. Hi everyone. See you well? Yeah, knackered from football this morning but I'll get through this video alright. That's good, that's good. And uh, on my left is Ashley Dye. Matt. Ashley. Matt. <laughs> Good, you well? <laughs> yeah, I'm good, mate. Good, good. Lots of, uh, lots of gaming time this weekend, so... How's that Last of Us treating you? Yeah, it's going well, really well. Yeah. Loving it. Well, we'll talk about that, obviously, at mm -hmm. the end of the show, but yep. for now, those of you out there that are not aware of what the Game of the Week show is, it is three friends sitting around this table every Monday to discuss the top news stories in the video game industry. We'll then close out our show with our featured Game of the Week. Okay, so let's get straight on with the news. And the first item this week... And 2K's game Evolve has been delayed until 2015. Uh, in a press release, they said 2K and Turtle Rock Studios are extending the development of Evolve by a few months to allow enough time to fully realise the vision for Evolve and meet our collective standards of creative excellence. We are encouraged by the press reaction and fan excitement coming out of a very successful E3, and we are now certain we are headed in the right direction with the game and are confident in delivering a genre-defining product when Evolve launches on February the 10th, 2015. So basically it's not ready yet. <laughs> yeah, That's a lot of marketing spiel, isn't it? It's always the same, blah, blah, blah. We're the Heinz. Yeah, I mean, mm. we talked about this last week with Battlefield. It's yeah. it's not the end of the world. There's plenty of games coming out in 2014 for us. It actually makes October, November easier to have a couple of these games shift. Yeah, so. it does. There are more and more that are shifting. Um, so they don't all shift from November no I mean well we've got we've already had Batman that got pushed yeah but that was pretty much expected Battlefield went which was not so as expected so was Evolve The Order uh, The Order which again was it's kind expected, of expected that one, wasn't it yeah and then The Witcher as well so those have all moved so actually yeah. February is now actually quite busy but that that doesn't bother me it's not it's not too busy as long as like you said no more games get yeah. and if the game's good we don't really care, do we? Uh, the end of the day. Yeah, we've no. said that before. Okay, so number two on our list, and Square Enix's Sleeping Dogs appears to be coming to PS4 and Xbox One. It was initially leaked by Amazon, but then Square Enix confirmed that the release will be happening on October the 10th. Uh, it will be coming with 24 additional pieces of DLC. Uh, guys, this is uh, another old-gen game coming to the current gen. What are your, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, it's another one to the list. Um, I was quite surprised. That I didn't think that Sleeping Dogs would. Um, you know, it's, it's not the game that shouts out. It's not. I didn't think it sold that well in comparison to yeah, other it, games. It's well, like, it depends what you talk about. I mean, if you look at it compared to a GTA, no, it didn't sell well. Obviously. But it, 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 it was a success. Uh, I don't have the exact figures in front of me, but it did sell well. Uh, they've already greenlit the sequel, okay, um, which is currently being worked on. But and, and this is, I mean, to only really announce this now, and it's what coming out in less than two months. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. But this isn't the first one that's come out. Obviously, we had Last of Us, GTA is coming, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts of this happening? Because it's, it's going to keep happening, I'm sure. Well, only for a, a certain amount of time, I think, until all the big releases are, are only released on current gen. I think they'll cover time, obviously, when it's it, they're no longer released on on the old mm. gen. But and that, <clears throat> one thing I suppose is is positive is that you've got the ability to then um, get your full 1080p out of a game on the PS4. Yeah. Whereas obviously you didn't have that on the previous gen. Um, but I think it should only still be reserved for the biggest of the biggest games. And uh, do you think, in part, though, they're just doing this to keep the multiplayer stuff alive? As more people shift over to like the current or the late gen, whatever you want to call it, it's I kind mean, of like you, the you, older gen is sort of gonna. Yeah, that, you could it? you could say that, but unless it's a game which has microtransactions in it, then the online is only really a cost to them. There's no benefit. This is this is basically, and um, I know other people have said it before. This is basically the way of these companies now making us pay for backward compatibility. Mm. Mm. You know, there used to be a time where you could put, you know, your PS1 games into your PS2. Correct. And play them. Yeah. Whereas now we can't do that. We have to wait for them to make it look a little prettier and then pay for the game all over again. But this, I would say, if anyone out there, though, talking to Sleeping Dogs in particular, did, 
Did you play it? Uh, not much. I still intend to finish playing it, but I think I don't know what came out. Something else came out, and I ended up replacing it with something else at the time. But okay. um, I did start playing it, and I do intend on playing it again. Yeah, you did. Play no, it, did you? it wasn't on See, my like, radar at the time. For you, for someone like you, I would say this is worth looking at because you're going to get all the extra DLC stuff, and it, it's a good game. It, I had a lot of fun playing it. Hmm. Yeah, it's a good game. But I wouldn't. I mean, I reserve judgment, and I'm also being quite hypocritical with Last of Us sitting in front of me. But yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay for a game just up list. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll explain later why. My, I'll justify it again. Okay? Yeah, yeah. But, I, I think there are certain games you can, and I think there comes if there's been enough of a delay between maybe you originally played the game. But yeah. Okay, so number three on our list, and there's been a, a load of financial reports coming out from various companies in line with their quarterly releases. Ash, you're our stat man this week. Why don't you fill in <laughs> yeah. our viewers? Uh, so uh, GTA 5, uh, we've got a release figures of 34 million copies to date. So uh, that's quite a few. Game was released in September last year. Yeah, it's not bad, I suppose. So pretty good. Bearing, it. In, bearing in mind, they sold 32.5 million copies in the first six months. So uh, I mean, obviously sales have slowed down a bit, but to still yeah. be getting... Um, that many sales you know a million and a half sales um, since, yeah. what, since February March or February yeah. March time. Yeah. a big yeah. game like GTA is going to be a lot of upfront. Mm. yeah well I mean some thing. games don't even make a million and a half in their lifetime yeah, yeah so, no, I'm yeah. just saying it's like the reason for like so many in the first six months is people pretty much buy it as they come yeah out, I think it was like that. wasn't it it was like the biggest selling entertainment product like uh, like opening in, of yeah, all time like it huge. made more but it was the fastest entertainment product to like gross a billion dollars I think I think you could see that figure possibly reach 50 million when it comes out I was going to say that, that, that doesn't oh, even include like I, the PC easy. And I, I think stuff. it's going to go way beyond that because yeah. you think how big the PC community is now they haven't yet played it yeah um, plus there were people where because of when it was coming out last year it was always going to come to next gen it was there was no way they were releasing it for a console a month before the new gen came out. Yeah. And then not port it over eventually. Exactly. So there will be some people out there that waited, and then there'll be people like you who mentioned last week that you're you're happy to I'd, buy, I'd it buy it again. I'd buy it again, yeah. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would, I would say, yeah, maybe even 60 million, 70 million. Yeah. Mm. It could easily it could easily double, especially about PC community. Yeah. And uh, NBA 2K, uh, 7 million. Uh, on the game sales, making it the ga- making the game the uh, the best selling sports game in the history of the Take Two. That's pretty good. Uh, um, Dan, you're the two K fan here. How how good is the game? I have it's visually very good. Visually, it's is like good. a few bugs and so on in there still. Some people aren't happy with the whole VC side of it that they've brought in in recent years, and it's a lot of connect, uh, connected to online stuff to be able to play the features, but. It plays well once you get to grips with what you're doing. Yeah, it's a no, solid I'm... game. I still go back to it now, and it's like, oh yeah, the next one's going to be out in like a couple of months. Well, it's the, <clears throat> it's also the third biggest um, or third best selling uh, title um, for shipments to the US on PS4 and Xbox One. Wow, so that's so... I assume only behind Call of Duty and Battlefield. I would imagine. So that's that's, that's pretty good. That's I mean, it was obviously a release title. Which it was a release title, wasn't it? Uh, if not yeah, released, yeah, it was very, early, released, very, close. It was very close. Yeah, very early. So yeah, but it no, second, it, second it does look very pretty. And congrats to them for mm. continuing to making good numbers. Yeah, it's, it is a very good looking game. Uh, Activision as well, uh, obviously known for Call of Duty, they uh, announced revenue of nine hundred seventy million dollars uh, for their second quarter. They are the devil. Are they not Activision though? <laughs> Why? Just ah, oh, that. Well, we talked about it last week, was it? Or maybe two weeks ago about the rock band thing and like how that whole genre died. Yeah. When Activision got their hands on Guitar Hero, they pretty much penetrated the market to like extensively. There was a new Gran Turismo. I was going to say no, Guitar Hero game every six months. Yeah. And they like annual like basically for them it's. It's an analysed franchise or nothing at all. Mm. They mm. just, I mean, maybe I'm being harsh. All get, all companies are in there to make money, but they just yeah. seem like most companies have this one title that they do depend on, though. And I think yeah. they they have to. 
yeah. you know it's like most companies um, they'll have their main their main product, product that they depend on and then a few extras which they try and boost up but they'll always have their main thing yeah maybe maybe, maybe I am being a bit harsh on them I mean from their point of view if if the game sells every year without you having to change it that much yeah why would you change it's, it that much it's not broken don't fix it yeah, that's true but pretty much a billion dollars one day our our YouTube channel will be that much <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's the uh, that's the numbers on that I'm sure there'll be some more to follow over the next few weeks but yeah, uh, cool. some interesting numbers definitely thanks for that Okay, number four on our list, um, this is Assassin's Creed related, so we'll hand it over to our Assassin's Creed expert there, Dan. Um, this is the Assassin's Creed game that was rumoured to be coming out for the previous gen, been confirmed. It's going to be called Assassin's Creed Rogue and releases on the 11th of November 2014. You play the role of Shay Cormac, who is a Templar recruit turned not Templar recruit, sorry, assassin recruit turned Templar. Okay. Uh, basically, the premise that they've given is he feels betrayed at some point while taking a mission for the assassins and turns to the Templars to get his revenge. Turn against his a revenge story. That, yeah. so that, that's original. It's okay. basically going to have very similar gameplay to Black Flag in the sense of you'll be able to sail around and do all the same sort of thing that you would have done there except for the fact that you can now sail up rivers. Okay, that's cool. So it's obviously yeah. not a big giant ship. Yeah, uh, it's single player only at this stage, they said. And also, it's apparently going to have some tie into Unity. Okay, but they haven't confirmed that yet. Well, they've not said exactly how, but it's okay. just more of it's going to tie into what occurs in Unity. So whether that's just a passing by tie in or have something more. Okay. Well, I don't know yet. There's obviously, yeah, the, the details are still quite scarce. Or scarce? Scarce. 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 <laughs> scarce at the moment. Scarce. But um, what, what do you think of this kind of approach of them releasing games on current gen and old gen? I mean, it, may, it they argue that it gives them the best possibility to make a I, next, gen, next gen experience. In Assassin's Creed terms I can understand why they've done it because they said they wanted to overhaul everything for Unity you know you've got their new sort of like parkour system that they want to bring in like change up the um, combat you've got the multiplayer stuff where you're playing together online and so so they've basically reformatted it to something that maybe they can't get in the old gen so rather than just trying to give a really bland basic version of the same game they just said no we'll yeah. just give you your own game yeah and so on and, so on and not mess with the mechanics so I can see why they might have yeah. done it in this case I don't think also I don't think the install base is big enough for you to be able to go next gen only yet either you know if if you go next it's gen only quite, you're, lose, you're leaving too much money on the table I think aren't you yeah it's, a, it's not quite there yet a couple more years and yeah okay well look forward to seeing more of that will you buy it probably not because I'm going to go for Unity okay and you're, you're all next gen now as well. I'm new all, gen. I'm all new gen. I mean, I do have some stuff for for, for old gen, but I'm um, I've got plenty to crack on and play crack. with. Yeah, yeah. Fair any enough. any new stuff I buy is definitely current gen now. Okay. Okay. So number five and the final item on our news this week, and it's good news for you Xbox fans out there. We talked about that white PS4 a couple of weeks ago and how shiny and pretty it looked. Well, now <laughs> you can get one as well. It's going to be bundled with Sunset Overdrive, which coincidentally actually does look like a very good game. Uh, there hasn't been an announcement on when this console will be coming out, but it can be assumed that it's going to be coming out at the same time as when the game comes out, which is October 28th. It will be the Connect 3 version. Guys, come on. Now you can get a white one. Mm, no. no. What I want to know is... Did they always have the white one planned, or was this like in direct response to the Destiny uh, bundle well, for the yeah. PS4? This like, is a panic, like ah, oh, they're bringing out a white one, <laughs> quick, quick. Yeah. <laughs> well, this might be a story that you guys might not be aware of because you don't follow Xbox as closely as me. But everyone that worked on the development of the Xbox One got given a special limited edition Xbox. One. Oh yeah, that was a staff that, only thing. Yeah, it was a staff it? only thing, and it was white, and on the dish tray it said. 
something like I made this oh, okay. or I helped make this yeah. so that was the only white ones that existed and there was some people in Microsoft because you know they could have been not really much of a gamer they were like selling them on eBay upwards of like like over a thousand pounds like sixteen hundred pounds wow. I bet those people feel like white mugs now so yeah. they can buy a white one for <laughs> four hundred bucks but uh, it, was it's, always, it was always going to happen yeah everyone like everyone just likes that uh there's demand for them to be in different colours and they'll come out. Yeah. Yeah. It's but like, you'll, it's, we saw like the red and blue PS3s. So you'll see something like that for the PS4s and the Xbox will undoubtedly do something as well. well I like having the different colour controllers. I mean, on the PS4, I'm sort of getting a mixture of yeah. different colours on there. The red, the blue, yeah. black. Yeah, I think we talked but, about the control, saying the controller's fine, but the console the is... The console, it's... Nah. Well, there you go. If... If you've been waiting for the white one, though, if it's your it thing, is. Yeah, yeah, October twenty eighth. Start saving that money up now. Okay, so now it's that time in the show where we will feature our game of the week, and this week we're talking about Naughty Dog's The Last of Us Remastered, available for the PlayStation Four. It came out last week and is the remastered version from last year's PS Three version. Um, it you take on the role of Joel, and he is accompanied by a teenage girl called Ellie as you travel across a post-apocalyptic nailed hey. it, world and basically, without going into too many spoilers of A to B, uh, any spoilers, you have to travel from A to B. Uh, guys, this game won over 200 Game of the Year awards. Obviously, it was a great game for the PS3. Mm. Is it still a great game for the PS4? Ash? Yeah, um, it is definitely still a great game. Uh, really good. I didn't play it all the way through on the PS3. Uh, held off because I knew it was coming out on the PS4. Um, been playing it now since uh, last weekend. And uh, yeah, loving the game. Absolutely brilliant. I'm still not finished on the story. But okay, so yeah, we won't get spoilers. Game. And anyone out there, don't worry. There will be no, yeah. no big spoilers to worry about. Yeah, but no, amazing game. Okay. Dan, obviously you haven't played this version yet, have you? No, because... I was holding off getting the PSD version at the tail end because I read stories at this, or at least rumours at the time this was coming out on yeah. the PS4. That got confirmed. I was going to pick this one up. Then Ash gave me a spare copy of uh, the PSD version that he got given. So I ended up playing through the story on that and I felt a bit too fresh to mm. jump in, get the PS4 version and play it again. Yeah. Loved the story. Loved the game. I just yeah. haven't gotten to see it in all its new shiny glory so, so what So what I'm getting from this is I haven't bought the game I managed to nib a free copy of the game it's sounding a little bit cheap don't you think <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go into details anything about that but no it's it is a very good game we we touched on obviously that it was Joel and Ellie and I think that's the real strength of this game if I'm going to talk about something that I like the most it's it's the characters, you know. Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson do fantastic job mm. voice acting, and a lot of the game, some would say, is kind of almost like an interactive movie. Yeah, but because it's so good, even if you're just walking the characters around, they're always kind of sharing dialogue, and it's just from start to finish, it's a great experience. Yeah, definitely. Um, on the positive side of the game, for me, it's it's the story, it's the personality of the characters. Um, you know, it's an incredibly well scripted game in terms yeah. of the dialogue, as you say, um, and and it really draws you into the characters to really sort of um, you know Naughty Dog did it with with Uncharted, and they do it again very well with this game. Um, they, they've got a great ability to to really get you feeling like you know the characters very well. Yeah, and you care for them. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, you talk about Naughty Dog, obviously this is um, Uncharted, and they had a lot of success on Uncharted. It's it's a very good series. Yeah. I know it's your your favourite. Favourite yeah. favorite and <clears throat> justifiable. It's a good choice. Yeah. But what what they've done quite well here, Dan, is even though it's a sim- you can feel like it is a Naughty Dog game, it does still feel very different. You know, Naughty Dog, oh, not Naughty Dog, Uncharted was a, a very kind of light-hearted affair, whereas this is quite dark and serious. It I mean, is, it, isn't it? it's it's not all dark and serious. It does still find the right it's, time. It's got its, it's got its moments that it brings out either the, either the jokes or just those shared moments between Joel and Ellie and so on. It just brings up the humanity of it a bit more than just like 
fight for survival, which is essentially yeah. what the world they're living in is all about. Yeah, there is. There are some times in the game when you do have to, like you say, fight for survival. And one of the things that makes it what I think is a very good stealth game is that you don't have enough ammo to just use your ammo whenever you want. You know, you're in a world that's kind of gone to shit for the past 30 years. Yeah. So, you know, you can't just walk into a, an ammo store and buy more ammo. Yeah, yeah. So when you encounter enemies, both not not just infected enemies, but other humans as well, you, you have to make a decision of how you're going to approach this. Yeah, is it all guns blazing or is it sneak past? Yeah. And I would say in, it, from my gameplay, it's been mostly sneak past because... In a lot, on a lot of cases, you, you know, you, you don't get any rewards for, you know, killing a hundred, hundred enemies. You don't get no. any, anything like that at all. So, you know, if if you can sneak past enemies, you sneak past enemies, and therefore, in my opinion, it is a very very stealthy game. Yeah, no, and it's, it's like what I like about it is it rewards you for that as well. Yeah, because, mm. you know, you're getting by getting when you get when you go past someone sneakily. You get the benefit of surviving, in fact, because when I find when you encounter people, you you very rarely just encounter one person. Yeah, and it's not like one of those gun blazing games where it is actually quite easy to kill a group of people. Mm. Like with Uncharted, you have like the cover system. They don't really have that in this game. You can no. still duck behind yeah. objects, it, but you don't have the kind of. It's a natural kind of just you go yeah. into it and it's like you don't press a button to duck and then another yeah. button to come back out and then duck again kind yeah. of thing it's you just yeah, no, it's... sneak into cover and you sort of sit there yeah yeah. yeah there's no cover and you're fully exposed as soon you are fully exposed yeah and I'm playing it on I don't know what you're playing on but I'm oh, playing it on moment. See, I'm playing it on hard because well I'm just that good <laughs> whatever <laughs> no, I'm, no the, reason, the only reason I'm playing it on hard in all seriousness was just I played it on normal the last time around and I figured I'd play it on hard because if I wanted to go to the Platinum Trophy, that's kind of one extra you trophy already to... unlocked. Yeah, you do. And when I've tried to shoot a group of enemies down, I've normally died. Yeah, Pick. yeah. I think, um, yeah, I mean, moving on to the sort of trophy side of things, I think one one part of, uh, of the trophies that's going to be quite tricky is the um, Survivor. Uh, trophy, I think uh, I know you're playing it on hard, so hopefully it's not too much more difficult for, for the Survivor Trophy. Um, there's 24 trophies in total for the game, um, and four of those are online trophies. Uh, half of the trophies are actually just collectibles, so yeah. it should be relatively straightforward. Mm. Um, yeah, I think so. You say it's straightforward. I would. If you're if you're playing I it through three, two or three, well, yeah. if you're playing it through two or three times, I think. Yeah, uh, I think. I think grounded isn't, isn't grounded the hardest difficulty. Uh, it's grounded. Uh, I don't know. I, I can't think remember what they are. The hardest difficulty you don't have. Joel has this thing in the game, uh, which is called like, is it enhanced oh, vision or special hearing vision, or whatever? Hearing, yeah, hearing mm, yeah. where you can hold R one and it helps you basically see through walls, not properly, but like you see the outline of them. Yeah, and that feature I find disabled really is uh, disabled in the hardest difficulty. And yeah, the num. You think now, how many encounters have you had where you've needed that to survive? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. And there'll be a, there'll be, you'll pretty much have no bullets, probably, mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yeah. I think that's going to be very hard to do. And the online, Dan, you said you've played a little bit of the online, did you? Oh, no, I've, I've, I've that. watched. You've watched, okay. And so like, it looks really good. Like, it's something that looks fun when you with a group of people that you know mm. yeah I don't know if it's the same interaction if you've got like six complete strangers jumping in together whether you get the same kind yeah. of gameplay feel that you would if it's six yeah. people you know I, I'm sure it's going to be better with friends that's the same with all online games it's always better with friends but I do like that they've tried to do kind of something a little bit different rather than just your standard team deathmatch yeah you know, it is a bit different but Going on to the trophies, I don't think I'll ever do it because I'm not a big online player. And I, I've yeah. heard that you would have to put a lot of hours to get those online trophies. It's yeah. not just 
pop on and do one mission you're talking like 20 maybe more hours it's like the hours that's a lot of commitment yeah Yeah. it's like the GTA online so to level up that that much will I platinum it no no I don't think I will I think I'll uh, I'll get the collectibles but I think I'll fall short of the platinum on this one yeah it's one of those things where I, I don't like necessarily forcing people to go online to get a platinum for a game yeah, because so, like that. I don't mind if it's if it's just pop on, complete a mission, and you can do it with two or three friends. It's these ones where you have to spend literally ten, twenty. Well, that's my point. So, like, it forces people to dedicate a large chunk of their time to online to online mm-hmm. gaming when it's not necessarily what they bought the game for. Yeah, yeah. and some. What well, is? I mean, the experience in The Last of Us is Story the single player experience. You don't. No one is going to go out and buy this game. For purely for, his multiplayer. for the multiplayer yeah. and to have to commit that many hours like Dan says is it's like 20 hours is probably more than you actually put into playing single player if you just went yeah. through without looking for the collectibles yeah. anyway it should be noted that she on the trophies this game does not have any story related trophies other than completing the game there are no complete oh, like chapter. kind of chapters yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. sure so uh, there are, there are, there's one or two I think kind of slightly story related or side story Dan mentioned before about Ellie with like sharing jokes and stuff. There's a there's a trophy in the game where Joel has to mm. survive her jokes. Yeah, I think you said. Yeah, and that you can get that during the game, but you have to do so. You have to like clear yeah. certain areas, and she tells jokes, which they're more puns. Um, one I had this morning, which I thought was quite funny, was uh, what is three point one four percent of all sailors pirates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, 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 there are there are a lot more. Um, I can see why you know. I, yeah, mm. I, I I used to have a, a soap addiction, but now I'm clean. <laughs> but I, I'm not going to spoil all of them okay. because they're so good. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> but uh, we, we won't say too much more about the game. But who who do you think it would appeal to? Because my opinion is absolutely everyone needs to play this game because it is generation defining it, yeah. it it doesn't win that many awards through luck it is that good there'll be some people out there that will hate on it because everything gets hate from some people yes yeah. because that's the internet <laughs> but it, it, if, you, if you like video games I think play this what absolutely I think um, yeah I mean it, it's, it appeals to me and uh, I, I think I can't think of many people it wouldn't appeal to it's, it's just a really really good game you've got you know if you want if you're not a great gamer play it on easy if you you know want a challenge play it on survivor mode but it's in terms of the story how it looks the uh, you know the personality of the characters uh, you know, there's endless pros yeah, on this that and basically there are no real cons no, apart from no. if you wanted to be really critical we could say like sometimes there is almost too much story and not enough interaction there is right. sometimes where you are just walking around and not doing much but it's a it's you know it's a survival world I'm not going to try and say that word again <laughs> apocalyptic <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah there, there are going to be times where you are in an empty world because I would only imagine that's what it's going to be yeah yeah but yeah. rating then, guys, out of ten. Uh, well, it, it's somewhere sort of between nine and ten. I'll, I'll go with nine and a half. Okay. I personally Dan? would say ten. Yeah, I think it's justifiable of a ten. It's it is that good. Not perfect, but it it's perfect in everything that it, it tries to achieve. Yeah, and that's why I would say that it is a ten. And um, even if you played it on the PS3 still very much consider it because it does look prettier yeah, it does look much better yeah you've obviously got your um, your 1080p everyone loves those P's everyone loves the P's <laughs> yeah and you've obviously got the DLC the left behind as well yeah, yeah. which is a, a prologue with Ellie which is good fun but make sure you still play it after the game okay guys so there is our opinion on The Last of Us Remastered make sure you go and buy it you will not be disappointed if you've liked what we've talked about this week with The Last of Us Remastered or any of the news topics, then please do like our video and subscribe to our channel. If you want to discuss anything regarding anything we've talked about in this video or anything gaming related, please do leave a comment down below. We will respond to you. For now, Ash, Dan, 
Cheers, Matt. Matt. Thank you for your time. And everyone out there, we will see you next Monday.